And when you look at the politicians that are just blowing through everything in the world today, they are communicators who are breaking all the rules. They are Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, to some extent Nigel Farage, um, Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, it's just the people who are sort of igniting and exciting people do tend to be people who are not obeying the rules. And I, uh, I think politics has reached a slightly sad state of people having to worry too much about what they say and thus losing touch with the people to whom they're trying to communicate. Here's a secret, folks, a really important secret. Most of the politicians you hear are better in private than in public. Now, that is a, a really peculiar thing for a country. Our politicians, you talk to them in private and they're engaging and they're interesting, they're interested, they've got views, they kind of think aloud, they know what they're doing right and wrong, and you can have an intelligent conversation with them. And then they come on to the Today programme and they go into a completely different language that no one else speaks or wants to speak. Uh, and they say stuff that isn't as intelligent, isn't as engaging. The leaders' interviews were a very, a, a slightly special case because I think there was quite a big expectation of a, a kind of an adversarial interview. And uh, in some ways, I think they were an uneasy compromise, actually, in, the, in, the, in that they were, that there was, you're trying to meet the expectation of what the, the form is meant to deliver. And you're kind of restricted into how far differently you can do it. So I think if, if I'm honest, if it was me, I probably would have made them a little bit less adversarial, a bit more chatty, and a bit more unpredictable issues. It must be very difficult, though, to stop personal feelings coming through just in the way you conduct it. I mean, there have been suggestions that the BBC, for instance, is very pro-migration and very pro-EU. You, you may not believe this. I'm actually much more open-minded about a lot of issues than personally, than, uh, th 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 than you might expect. How often will I argue a point that I think is complete rubbish? Um, on, I mean, I, I have done it. I have, I have done it. I'm, I'm arguing a point because I think it's important that the argument is carried out. But do I argue a point that I think is complete rubbish as much as one that I think may have some validity? I don't know. I think I probably don't. I mean, I think I probably, I probably do fil filter the arguments that I kind of think are interesting or edgy or need airing to some extent. I've got a really interesting stat okay, on, on the subconscious bias one, which okay, I'm, yeah, that, I'm sure you can guess the background it comes from. Um, in your leadership interview with Ed Miliband, which you said was supposed to be more confrontational, um, or the, all the leaders' interviews mm. were supposed mm. to be more confrontational, you interrupted him 32 times. Mm -hmm. Whereas when interviewing Nigel Farage, whose views would be perhaps considered a mm -hmm. bit less BBC, um, that was almost well, getting closer to double that. It was 50 mm. interruptions. Do you think there's merit on that, or do you think Farage just needs more prodding? It's a factor of who well, he is. Well, uh, we ran out of questions on Ed Miliband. Ed Miliband's answers were very significantly shorter than Nigel Farage's answers. Mm -hmm. And I think we had about the same number. I had, I had in my hand, in the bits of card, probably the same number of questions. There were two. And so I think... Uh, some of what is going on in that comparison is crisper answers from I do not band. think, mm -hmm. for what it's worth, um, that I would call it a fundamental change in our relationship with the European Union. I'm happy to say that. It doesn't look like that. Nor do I think it was entirely trivial. This agreement has kind of enshrined what was already the kind of the object, which was we are not... <laughs> in the center of this thing, we are in the second tier. And I, I actually think that's, I think that is not nothing actually. And it's a sort of, it's a, the recognition by them that we're never gonna satisfy this country and it's not gonna be a kind of uh, one size fits all is, is not to be sniffed at. But actually if you look at what actually has been in tangible terms, can, you know, what actually has been conceded we don't have a veto over the Eurozone. The benefits thing is, it, 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 is, is probably not the big driver of, ben of, of migrant behavior. The phrase ever close union, you know, it's, it's, it did get people's back up. So it's, it's, it's kind of perhaps interesting to clarify it. But it, I, in, 
in, in sort of practical terms, I'm not sure how much. If you have a job at the BBC, you have a privilege, right? You guys are paying my license fee, and I owe it to all of you to kind of not exercise the privilege I have, the platform I have, to advocate things that half of you are going to find annoying or objectionable. So if I say, you know, vote Labour uh, or vote Conservative, it is clearly an abuse of my position. Um, and it's an abuse of my position because people will listen to me more than they will listen, they'll more listen to me more because I'm a BBC employee than they would because I'm, if I wasn't a BBC employee. So the reason for me saying vote Labour or vote Conservative would simply be that people want to know because I'm a BBC person. So I cannot pronounce, and nor should my colleagues, publicly, at a small dinner party of three people, maybe, but cannot pronounce publicly on issues in which people might I'm always differ. asked, who's your favourite dragon? That's always my first question. And it's Deborah Meaden. And it's Deborah Meaden. You've okay, well, yeah. before we get asked that, why? De Deborah is very grounded, and she, she doesn't... She doesn't feel a need to project, and uh, you, you know she's just she's just she's she's not a kind of. Well, it's hard, isn't it? Because if I say she's not a show off, that obviously implies the others are show off, but she's not a show off, and 